Welcome to the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. My name is Amy. I'm from the channel Flip It Furniture. Today, I'm so excited to show you this transformation. We are gonna take a regular dresser and turn it into a work of art using decoupage paper, chalk mineral paint, and some simple blending techniques. For a list of all the products I use in this video and where to buy them, be sure to check out the description box below. Today, I'm gonna take this regular dresser and turn it into a work of art. I got this dresser for free. It's not real wood. It is a particle board dresser. It was sitting in someone's garage for a really long time, so it's extra dirty. We'll just have to clean it up. The first thing I noticed was that the back was totally detached, and that probably happened while we were moving it. I saw that the screws were ripped out and I would have to just fix it. So I had to put it on its side, take some of the drawers out, and while I did this, I cleaned it up. I marked the drawers on the bottom just so they wouldn't get mixed up. I numbered them and I continued to vacuum the inside. Because it was in a garage, there's a lot of just kind of dust and uh, leaves and things like that. I used my hammer and I pounded the back in place and then I just used some new screws and I screwed down the little wood pieces. Now just to reinforce everything, I take my air nailer and I nail the backboard piece to the dresser. I remove all the hardware and put it in a bag for later. I'm actually gonna keep this same hardware. Then I start cleaning the piece and I use Dixie Bell's White Lightning to clean down the entire piece. I'm talking the insides of the drawers, the sides of the drawers, the drawer railings, the cubbies from where the drawers come from, the top, the bottom, just everywhere. You wanna make sure that the piece is really nice and clean, and especially because it was sitting in a garage for so long. The top of this was a little bit trickier. I'm pretty sure that this is homemade slime on top. This was a kid's dresser after all. So this is glue and borax. Um, and I used my scraper to try to get it off, my scraper and my vacuum, and that helped a whole lot. Then I used some steel wool that didn't really work. So then I used the magic eraser and some water and that helped a lot, but mostly it was the scraper. Once the piece was entirely clean, I needed to go over it with some water and a fresh rag, and that's just to make sure there's no cleaner residue left on it. Now I'm getting ready to apply my primer. I'm using a roller. The first thing I need to do is grab some foil. I lay down the foil so that I don't get my pan messy. And for this primer, I'm using the Bonding Boss. This is Dixie Belle's new primer. It's an all-in-one, so it works on really slick and shiny surfaces, but it also works on blocking odors and tannins. And I had to put it back because I realized that I was using it in clear. And I, as you can see, I still have some of that um, discoloration on the top, so I wanna use it in white. So I just poured it back in the bucket and then re-poured and used the white one. And this will give me a nice even um, top. It'll give me even coverage instead of using the clear. If I was gonna distress the piece and I wanted wood to show through, then I would use clear, but otherwise I'm gonna use the white or the gray. Now the rules for the bonding boss is you wanna wait about four hours in between coats and then a full 24 hours before applying your paint. Another rule you wanna stick with is don't clean your brushes down your sink or the bonding boss will ruin your pipes. So I'm just gonna keep that roller, little top roller piece that I used in a, in a little plastic bag and then I can use it later on again. I'll probably use the boss again in a few days. Now this gorgeous decoupage paper is called Sunflower Sunset. It's a rice paper. The first thing I need to do is add a little base coat underneath and I'm using the color drop cloth. That's because this decoupage paper is transparent and I would like it to be nice and bright. So using a brighter color is always a good idea. And that's with most decoupage papers. They're pretty transparent, you can see through them. So if you put a dark color, you might have it, um, it might just look a little bit darker. But if you have that brightness underneath, it'll, it'll really shine. If you don't wanna see the seams 
on your decoupage paper, um, a quick thing that you can do is just add a little bit of water with your brush along the sides and then rip it towards you. You just flip the paper on the back and then as you can see, right now I'm ripping it outward, but you can also rip it towards you. And then when you're getting ready when you have your decoupage paper on the dresser and you're getting ready to paint, you won't have those harsh lines. It'll kind of blend in a little bit better. So it looks messy here, but it's not gonna be once it's on the piece because you're gonna paint that in. And then I just flip it over and I do the other side. I'm not gonna worry about the top or the bottom because it actually fits the piece and I'll show you that later. Now for my decoupage medium, I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin. This is one of my favorite mediums to use for decoupage because it doesn't dry super fast. You get a little bit of working time with it. And I always like to work in small sections because I think it's really important not to rush it. If you rush your decoupage project, then you're most likely to have rips, um, bubbles, and a lot of wrinkling. If you just take your time with it, you're gonna have a lot less and it's gonna look way better. The I think the most time that I spend on the decoupage project is lining it up. So right where that middle seam is, I'm gonna line this paper up to right where the drawers meet each other. The next thing I do is I grab a little bit of plastic wrap and I scrunch it up. And that's because I don't wanna be rubbing the paper with my hands, um, I'll, that it'll just rip way easier. If I use the plastic wrap, I have better chances of not ripping it. And it's just a little bit more gentle. And another thing that I like to do now is use a little bit of the water from the mister. And that takes the fibers from the paper and it allows me to, it kind of expands them a little bit so I won't get as many wrinkles. So now I just take my time and I gently rub the decoupage paper going in a downward motion. I'm trying to not let any air underneath and I'm trying to rub out any of the wrinkles. And don't get me wrong, some wrinkles are okay. Some are inevitable. Like right now, I know that there's wrinkling gonna happen here. I'm having a little bit of trouble with this side. You just sort of have to move on, <laughs> except there will be wrinkles. It's not gonna be perfect every time. Um, a ton of wrinkles and then it looks like you've really messed up but a little bit of wrinkling is not bad and because these pieces look like pieces of art the wrinkles actually look pretty good it looks like there's texture once you start messing with it and you're not so afraid um, usually you can spend the time and then get the wrinkles out. Like I knew there was going to be a wrinkle over there. So I just kind of moved on. I went to the other side and then I came back. And as I came back, I did get the wrinkle out, but then there was another wrinkle right underneath. <laughs> so you just kind of have to pick and choose. And, and I was okay with one little wrinkle being there. So I know a lot of people obsess over the wrinkles. Don't it's still gonna look great. So there was a little wrinkle over there and I'm moving on. Now I don't spray the paper on this one because as you can see there, it's still wet. You don't wanna saturate your paper or you will definitely have ripping and the color will come off. So when you're using your water mister, you only want just a small mist on there. That's enough to help expand those fibers. So there's my wrinkle. And, and I'm coming back like trying to fix it, but you know, it's not bad. So then I just, I move on. I ignore the gaps in between the drawers and I just continue down the piece in the same exact way that I did the first drawer.
Here's what it looks like once the decoupage paper is on. And I do not touch it until that paper is completely dry. If I'm honest, I usually wait until the next day. I don't put my sealer over the decoupage paper until I've cut between the drawers and until it's completely dry. This is just my personal preference. I feel like it's much cleaner. The job is much cleaner when, if you wait until that decoupage paper is dry underneath before adding it onto the top. So then while it's really dry, I can cut through, open my drawers, add my sealer underneath the paper on the sides and just fold them back. And then once I have that done, then I can add my sealer to the entire front of the decoupage paper. Now that it's all dry, I'm ready to start painting. And I'm using a bunch of different colors from Dixie Belle's Chalk Mineral Paint line. The first one I'm gonna use is chocolate. And that's because I decided to go to the bottom of the drawers first. There is um, a little space, it's only about half of an inch, where the paper didn't go all the way down. So I wanna fill that in first before I move on. And painting in the decoupage paper can seem like it's, it can be extremely intimidating, but I can't tell you enough how easy it actually is. So now I'm using kernel mustard. I think I've called kernel mustard colonial mustard a few times before, and somebody just corrected me in one of my other videos. It's kernel mustard. Um, it's a great color for the sunflowers on this piece. That chocolate and the color daisy worked really, really well to blend in and create more of the sunflowers. The next color I'm using is palmetto, and that's to bring in those dark greens in between the flowers. And I will also be using it to extend the decoupage paper out. I know this video seems like it's really, really long, so I did speed up how fast I was stippling my brush right now is actually how fast I'm going. But for the rest of the video, I'm gonna speed it up or else it would be hours long. But I'm also using aubergine because I see some of that dark purple inside the paper. The next green that I add is called evergreen. And I'm adding this green because you can see that there are different greens in the paper and that'll add some depth and dimension. If I just had the one color of palmetto in there, it would look really flat and it won't blend as well. But if we add some lighter and darker greens, it's gonna look much more like the paper. And something to note that I think is really important, if I had just used a synthetic brush and I was brushing this on going back and forth, you know, it would look, it wouldn't have that texture. It wouldn't have the look of the actual paper. That's why I'm stippling it. Every motion that you make with your brush gives you a different look on your piece. So you can experiment with that when you're working on your own pieces and just, you know, see what happens, see what look it gives, because that'll open you up to a lot more um, techniques, a lot more things to try when you're painting your furniture. Now I'm going back and forth with palmetto and evergreen. I'm just stippling to create that texture 
And then I was gonna try to do some more sunflowers, but it's too wet. I need to wait to do the sunflowers until it dries. So now I'm gonna continue going upwards. And my next color is tea rose. So I'm gonna mix some tea rose and then I mix kernel mustard and then I'm gonna add a little bit of Florida orange. I will say that I used so many colors on this piece and I'm gonna link them all in the description box below if you're interested. You don't have to use as many colors as I used, but I was having a lot of fun with this and I just went with it. One good thing that I really like about um, Dixie Belle's chalk mineral paint is the price. You can buy, the eight ounce containers are $13.95 and you can buy the four ounce containers for $9.95. And for me, when I was getting started, um, I think I discovered Dixie Belle around 2017. The price was so ideal for the quality of the paint. Um, that is one of the biggest reasons that I started using it because I could afford to do projects like this and have, you know, the art projects and I didn't have to pay, you know, $30 for like a 16 ounce. There were other options. So if you're doing something like this, I don't use a lot of the paint. You could actually probably get away with just four ounces, a container. Now my next colors are dusty blue and the golf and I'm blending those together to match the paper. Now here's where um, I just start using some of the brushes that I used before. Like right there, I used my orange brush over the greens and that's to create again that that look that we see in the paper and like right now I'm adding a little bit of brown so I can match that I see some brown in the paper so there's a little bit of brown over my on my orange and then again I want to bring that green down just so I can make them meet up and you really have to just kind of play with your colors and don't be afraid to add if you add something and it looks bad just paint over it I mean that's what I do um, and sometimes it works out like with this piece I don't know how but it worked out really really well um, like right there I started taking some of the paint off I just added a little bit of more orange you know and then I let that part dry and I'll come back to it later and blend it out a little more now the next color I have here is kudzu Now I'm adding more aubergine to the piece because I see a lot of like muddy, it's almost kind of muddy colors on the decoupage paper. And then I add a little bit of secret path to soften that up. And then I'm gonna add my dusty blue again because I see dusty blue on the other side. So yeah, I have all these colors and I'm just trying to blend it so that it looks like it's coming out from the decoupage paper. Like, it, you know, the decoupage paper is just huge. You like, you wouldn't even know it was decoupage paper. And I wish I could say that there was like a, a big rhyme or reason to how I apply the paint, but you just kind of have to listen to your gut and you have to look at the paper um, and follow your instincts on whether it needs a little bit of light or dark or like right there, I just added yellow because I thought, well, it needs a little bit more mud. But then it looks too weird, so you gotta soften it up. And so I add a little bit more of those pastel blues and the lavender, the secret path. Um, so you just look at the paper and go for it. <laughs> And I do pull the drawers out and just follow the pattern from the front onto the sides. So 
that that's apricot I see a little bit of apricot on the decoupage paper so I'm adding that to it and then just blending it and I do that to the top of the drawers the sides and when I pull out the drawers I do also do it on the cubby so I'm just following the pattern on the paper onto the piece Here's what it looks like with one side done and the other undone. So now for this other side, I'm adding pinks, purples, the dusty blue. My pink is gonna be the peony, and then dusty blue, and then the secret path along with apricot. I think it'll give that beautiful sunset look. And another thing I love about decoupage papers that you can paint with that look like paint is they're so forgiving. So if you do make a mistake, it's just not a big deal. You can't even tell because there's so much going on in that paper that it doesn't matter. <laughs> so as long as it all looks like it's lined up, it's going to be gorgeous. And here I'm using the aubergine and I will mix a little bit of um, peony just to give that sunset look over there. And then I put some chocolate in because it looks like there's like mountains in the background or something. And then I'm adding a little bit more drop cloth and that's to make the, the top between apricot and kernel mustard a little bit lighter. I also want to ask if you're enjoying this video or getting any value from it, I would love it if you hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps my channel out and then it helps you to see my future videos. Now once the bottom with the greens are completely dry, I come back with my kernel mustard and my daisy and I'm gonna make a couple flowers just to extend the flowers on the decoupage paper or else it kinda looks like it's just been cut off. 
And I think if it flows down the piece, it's gonna look much better. Now, because I don't want this video to be like an hour long, <laughs> So what you just saw me do on the drawer fronts is what I do on the entire piece. The sides, um, the top, you know, extending out into all the trim. Uh, I will show you really quick how I do the top, but I'm, I'm gonna do this in a sped up motion or else seriously, we would be here for like two hours. But I think showing you the drawer fronts, you can get the picture on how I blend. It's just a beautiful stipple blend and you kind of follow the paper, the colors you see on the paper, you bring up or you bring out to the sides. And to seal the piece, I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin. I'm gonna do this in my paint sprayer because I just love the way that the finish looks afterwards. I don't really have to worry about any streaking or anything when I use the paint sprayer. And I apply three coats to the bottom and then four coats to the top and I wait about an hour in between the coats. And one little thing I wanna address, if you have any bubbles underneath your paper, that's air bubbles, you can use a razor blade and just slice it and add your clear coat to it. Try to get your clear coat underneath the paper. Um, I don't usually like to do it this way anymore because I noticed that the razor blade leaves some marks on the paper. So another option, which you don't have to do, that's why I did both options, is you can get little syringes. I buy mine on Amazon. You can fill them with the clear coat and then just poke a hole into the paper. And you know, once you pump the syringe, it just, it goes behind the paper. And then for the hardware, I primed the hardware with the bonding boss, and then I used colors that were really close to how it would look on the paper. And then I also sealed it with my satin clear coat. Here's a reminder of what it looked like when we first started. And here it is today. I absolutely loved 
working on this piece. I really, I had so much fun. Um, if you ever want to just feel like an artist, grab a decoupage paper that, you know, looks like paint and just have a blast with it. We'll see you all next time with another furniture makeover.